what's up beautiful people listen to my welcome to the channel today we're going to be checking this video and it's titled new armed migrant gang invades new york city oh jeez interesting i'm excited to check this one out to hear what i've got to say let's check it out many of them caught stealing in order to pay for fake ids to gain employment migrants looking for fast cash to get a job can wind up as pawns in a criminal operation a venezuelan gang called tren de aragua has made its way to the borderline this rapidly expanding gang has spread throughout south america and now into our communities transnational criminal organization known as the tren de aragua is a venezuelan gang that has now infiltrated its way into the united states through various sectors of the U.S.-Mexico border. A new migrant gang has successfully infiltrated the United States. Their operations have remained shrouded in secrecy, and the presence of this gang has sparked fear. As details emerge, the true extent of their reach and influence is becoming clearer, painting a grim picture of the challenges ahead. The authorities are on high alert, implementing measures to track down and apprehend members of this dangerous gang. The presence of Tren de Aragua in New York City, we're seeing all these brazen cell phone robberies where two guys on a moped will go onto a sidewalk in Manhattan and they will steal a cell phone out of the hands. Two of the suspects in this case are members of a brutal Venezuelan gang. That gang is called Tren de Aragua. According to reports, approximately 1,000 gang members successfully escaped following a a prison break at Tuckeron Prison thousand. in September 2023. Among the escapees oh, are believed to be members of the Tren de Aragua gang, including their leader, Hector Rustenford Guerrero Flores, and 80 other high-ranking gang members. Interpol has issued a warning that Guerrero Flores may be hiding in the United States. The criminal syndicate is engaged in various illicit activities, such as thefts, narcotics trade, illicit money transactions, and human smuggling across South America. Law enforcement agencies caution that the organization is seeking to broaden its global influence. Presently, they possess an extensive operational network spanning multiple countries in South America, including Brazil, Colombia, Peru, and Chile. It is interesting to know that when 11,000 soldiers raided Venezuela's Tocaron prison in September, they were met with something far from a typical correctional facility. Instead, they stumbled upon what resembled a corporate headquarters and a theme park for the notorious Tren de Aragua gang. The criminals had constructed a pool for swimming, an area for children's play, a court for food, a field for baseball, a bar, a disco, a shop for betting, and even a zoo while accommodating hundreds of their wives, children, and girlfriends. This establishment served wow. as their headquarters for engaging in criminal activities. In exchange for order, officials allow them to do whatever they want. The authorities express concern over the possibility of these gangs collaborating with other criminal organizations in New York, causing widespread chaos, exposing America to various criminal activities, or instigating violent territorial conflicts between gangs. The Trendy Aragua Gang, also recognized as TDA, has infiltrated various states including New York City, Texas, Florida, Illinois, and Georgia. Many TDA members <gasps> like to wear Chicago Bulls basketball clothes, even though they don't have anything to do with Chicago or the Bulls. Not only does this gang rob, they have been trained to be hitmen. Chicago gang members. Law enforcement says they are infiltrating cities in the United States and maybe forming alliances with gangs that are already established here. A 23-year-old Yerwin Salazar, a migrant from Venezuela who lives in South Florida, has been charged with taking the life of Jose Luis Sanchez Valera, who is a retired police officer. Alleged member and a Venezuelan migrant is now being charged with murder of a retired Venezuelan police officer in South Florida. As stated in a Miami-Dade police report, Sanchez departed from his residence at approximately 10 p.m. on November 27th. He proceeded to the La Quinta Inn Hotel and Suites located at 3501 NWW 42 Ave to rendezvous with a woman in room 310. After spending four hours in the room, he exited and descended to the lobby via the elevator, where he was accompanied by two women. Mm. While the women proceeded to the lobby, Sanchez exited the hotel through a side exit that led to the parking lot. Upon entering his car, three unidentified individuals wearing dark clothing emerged from a silver sedan parked close to the Sanchez's vehicle. 
They proceeded to physically remove Sanchez from the driver's seat and forcefully placed him in the back seat. Shortly after, surveillance cameras captured Sanchez's 2018 Toyota 4Runner, leaving the parking lot with the three unknown individuals and Sanchez in the back seat. The Toyota later returned to the parking lot, and one of the attackers exited the vehicle and entered the silver sedan that the kidnappers had left near the victim's car. At approximately 3.40 a.m. on November 28th, the police received a report regarding an armed home invasion at a Doral apartment, which was later identified as Sanchez's residence. Two male individuals, armed with a firearm, forcibly entered the apartment and demanded jewelry from the roommate of the victim. After successfully obtaining a safe from the victim's bedroom closet, the subjects fled the scene in a silver sedan that matched the description of a silver sedan seen at La Quinta Inn Hotel. When leaving, one of the subjects informed Sanchez's roommate that they were affiliated with Tren de Aragua. Sanchez was discovered hours later in his vehicle, his body, hands, and feet tied with tape. The autopsy revealed that the cause of death was mechanical asphyxia, leading to the ruling of homicide. Evidence found in the vehicle indicated that Salazar was involved in the abduction of Sanchez. Salazar was apprehended in Broward County and brought to Miami-Dade court to answer to charges including armed home invasion, carjacking, and kidnapping. He is presently detained without bond. It doesn't end there. New details tonight about the two Ibarra brothers. We're learning one of them may be connected to a ruthless gang. Not known that Jose Ibarra was a member of the violent Venezuelan criminal gang, Trin de Aragua, when he entered the country illegally initially. Diego Ibarra, brother of the illegal immigrant accused of brutally taking the life of Locke and Riley, is connected to the dangerous Trendy Aragua Venezuela gang. Diego Ibarra, aged 29, had previously been arrested and accused of having a counterfeit green card when he presented it to the authorities during their search for his brother. During the investigation, Homeland Security discovered images. So, it is evident that this um, individual or this mem gang member is was um, trying to seek revenge to the retired police officer so how are they how did they even get all of this information to know the exact location of oh my god this is not making sense so is it is it now uh, what so what information are they telling people that they can come to america and do whatever they want to do because i mean america's arms are wide open to allow and accept everybody but this right here is not making sense. I thought the um, aim was to come to America and enjoy your stay, live peacefully. But it seems like the more people are coming, some people are coming with a different intention. And how is it that this, how are these people able to do all of this? Successfully. Somebody some ways definitely helping them wow let's go search for his brother during the investigation homeland security discovered images of diego displaying the gang's hand gestures on the internet as well as distinctive tattoos such as stars clocks trains weapons and crowns to make things worse additional photographs of him posing with firearms were discovered on the internet <laughs> Even though individuals residing in the United States without legal documentation are prohibited from possessing firearms, Mike. he was granted release from immigration detention while awaiting the resolution of his asylum claim on April 30th, 2024. One month later, he reportedly removed his ankle monitor, which had been placed on him by Immigration and Customs Enforcement. Huh. The monitor was later discovered in Colorado. What? But by then, Diego had already reached Athens, Georgia. During his time in Georgia, Diego encountered law enforcement on several occasions, facing numerous DUI charges, allegations of stealing his girlfriend's phone, and reportedly engaging in shoplifting at two separate Walmart locations. He was arrested again after he matched the description of his brother, who took the life of a nursing student on the UGA campus. On February 22nd, Locke and Riley, a 22-year-old Augusta University student, was tragically beaten to death by his younger brother, Jose Antonio Ibarra, age 26. He is accused of brutally attacking her with an unidentified object. Riley's remains were discovered later that day within the University of Georgia campus, 
located in a wooded section near Lake Herrick, where many runners and walkers frequent the trails. Huh. Riley's demise was a result of severe injuries caused by a brutal physical assault, leading to blunt force trauma and a severely disfigured skull. To conceal his evil deed, Jose attempted to hide the incident by moving her lifeless body to an isolated location. The reason for killing her? Nothing. In September 2022, Jose Ibarra entered the USA illegally through El Paso, Texas, wow. but was subsequently released from a detention facility due to overcrowding. He is facing multiple charges for the demise of Lake and Riley, and he was granted no bail. Investigators say Barra would send out messages via WhatsApp, telling the group what to steal. The activities of the illicit empire know no bounds. They are now involved in so many cases of phone robbery across New York City. Another Tren de Aragua gang member, Victor Para, a 30-year-old from Venezuela, is on the run. He has been identified as the mastermind behind a gang of criminals who use mopeds as their means to steal mobile phones and wallets in New York City. Para utilizes WhatsApp to send messages to enlist his partners in crime. In this message, he clearly states the specific phone models he needs. His main focus for recruitment is newly arrived immigrants. These criminals focus on women who are walking alone, coming up from behind to swiftly snatch their phones or handbags before making a quick escape. The stolen phones are brought to Para's residence, where a skilled technician hacks into them to gain access to the victim's financial and banking applications. Subsequently, these applications are utilized to carry out fraudulent transactions in the United States and Central America. The stolen phones are taken to Colombia to be wiped off any day. Imagine. Upon searching Para's residence, Law enforcement uncovered 22 stolen Toy. phones and identification documents that belong to the victims. Investigators have apprehended a total of five individuals. It is uncertain to determine safety as the gangs expand their networks recruiting teenagers and giving rise to teen crimes. For the shooting in Times Square, he is now being charged as an adult. The news of Alejandro Rivas Figueroa has sent communities reeling, questioning their safety because these Trende Aragua members have no respect for the law or police force. Jesus Alejandro Rivas Figueroa, a 15-year-old boy, was caught shoplifting at a sporting store in Times Square. He was with two other people when a store employee noticed them holding a bag filled with clothes and sneakers. The employee asked them for a receipt, but they couldn't provide one. So the employee took the bag back and started asking the boys more questions. This is when he made a bad move. Out of nowhere, the teenager dressed in all white, Rivas Figueroa, takes out a powerful 45 caliber what? handgun and shoots at the police officer. Shockingly, he also fires at the crowd. Thankfully, the officer narrowly avoids getting hit by the bullet. Tragically, a 37-year-old Brazilian tourist, who was patiently waiting in line to purchase sneakers, gets struck in the knee and suffers injuries. Why? The entire crowd becomes terrified and pandemonium breaks loose inside the store as people start running and hiding in fear. He was able to escape from the police on 6th Avenue, but before he got away, he shot at the police officer who was chasing him. This was dangerous <sighs> because there were a lot of people around, and any of those bullets could have seriously Talk hurt somebody. or even killed an innocent person. That's why the police officer couldn't shoot back at the 15-year-old because there were too many people nearby. He ran to a subway station and went back to his house where he and his mom started packing up their stuff to leave the city. The criminal was found hiding in a closet at a residence in Yonkers, New York. Unfortunately, this isn't the first time Rivas Figueroa has committed a crime in New York City. He is believed to have been part of an armed robbery in the Bronx on Jan 27th, and also the incident on Jan 25th where gunshots were fired at a park on 45th Street. He faced multiple charges as an adult and was detained without bail. Another teen from Venezuela, Andres Gomez Izquiel was taken into custody in connection with the attack on two police officers. He faced charges of second degree assault on a police officer and obstructing governmental administration. After being arrested not too long ago, Andres Gomez Izquiel got arrested once more for supposedly stealing from a store and hurting a Macy's worker in Queens. He was with a gang that took $600 worth of clothes from the store and he even punched the employee who was trying to catch them. The worker only got minor injuries from the incident. The violent nature of this gang has made people concerned. On January 27th, a camera caught some guys and two cops having a calm chat. But things took a turn for the worse when the officers tried to arrest one of the guys. It got violent real quick, starting with a kick to an officer's head. Later, a bunch of guys jumped in and started attacking the officers who were already on the ground. Mm -hmm. They kept punching and kicking them over and over again. Two days later, they managed to catch five out of the seven suspects. They arrested Yohenry Brito, 
the main suspect during the investigation of two police fights. He got bail for $15,000, and guess what? A priest. Okay. Bail. Authorities are tense now and are quickly finding a solution to get rid of this gang. Its move is met with difficulties. Customs and Border Protection, CBP, and Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE sources have said that it's really hard to send Venezuelan gang members back to their country because Venezuela doesn't want them back. Despite having 335,000 encounters at the border, they have successfully deported only 834. A potential setback for American officials at our southern border. Venezuela has stopped accepting deportation flights from the U.S. and Mexico. Wait, so if I'm getting this correctly, they can't send back these gang members back to Venezuela or these Venezuelan gang members back to Venezuela because Venezuela has stopped accepting deportation flights or the yeah, Venezuela have stopped accepting them. So is it America that is supposed to keep them or accept them? Eh? This is not real. I just want to believe this is not real or this is a movie because this is insane. It is not making sense. And my pro question is, what uh, is their problem with beating or attacking cops? It seems like they don't even have respect for cops anymore for government officials or for the government because what exactly is going on why is this on the rise 15 year old 15 and how did they even get old to possess all of this armed oh jesus christ no no i don't even need an answer to that question because it's oh, pretty obvious somebody is funding them, somebody is helping them. And the question is who? This is not making sense. Wow, New York is truly a mess right now. This is crazy. And how did he get his words? Because it's just going to start from New York, but it's also going to spread across to other states and other places. People aren't safe anymore in America. And this alarming it is crazy. But let me know what you think about this. I'm sure tons of people have interesting things to share. I really love your honest contribution. You can share all the useful information you think might be really helpful. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and all of that stuff. And until next time, see you in the next video.